One, two, yeah. Winning games, basewinner.com. Yeah. All right, you got the base winner here, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about predictive modeling and how you can use that in your baseball handicapping. If you guys aren't inter interested in predictive modeling, you can go ahead. We're going to have an underplay, and I'll talk a little bit about that in just a second. But let's start. Let's start with the predictive modeling side, and I think it's really important that you can adjust for quality of opponent, and that's whatever sport you're talking about. Whether you're talking about, you know, basketball, football golf, you, you have to adjust for, for quality of opponent and conditions played in. So I'm going to go into the log cutter. You guys are familiar with this log cutter. It's built in to the log cutter and I'll call it and show you the details of it and we'll, we'll focus on a couple of pictures uh, where, it's, where it's relevant for. And uh, then we'll give you an underplay from base winner crunch here. And now these unders are really nice plays. And uh, over the years, they've been our bread and butter. We've had really good utility with them. Today, we are in our, all of our glory. We have four unders, four unders going today. And we have one that ended up one, one nothing, one two nothing, and a shutout and another one. And they're all looking pretty good, I guess, long story short. So I know it's small sample size, but we're having a great day on these unders. So I'm gonna give you one of those at the end of the video, talk a little bit about predictive modeling and uh, give you a play. So let's get into it. Okay, let's take a look at the log cutter. You guys that have been Base Winter Nation for a long time, you know about the log cutter. And this is one of the tools that we use to adjust pitcher numbers for quality of opponent faced, as well as the park factors that the pitcher pitched in. Because uh, I always say this, uh, and I've said this uh, many times on shows, um, I think that a home run off of Clayton Kershaw in Dodger Stadium should be treated differently than a, a home run at Coors Field off of, I don't know, Anthony Sensatella, say. So this, this is one of our, the tools that we use to adjust for, for the quality of opponent for the, uh, for the park factor. And if you guys uh, didn't see the video that I did about the Reds uh, from a couple days ago, there's a really good example, you see a Puig, baby, the wild horse, how we adjust the numbers uh, to account for quality faced and park factors played in for the offensive player. So that's another good resource if you're looking to see, well, how do, you know, how do we set up this predictive model? And this is a good step to, to know if you're, if you're doing that. So, okay, let's take, oh, Senzatella, he's, he's looking pretty fierce right here. And uh, he must've just given up a home run, but let's take him out of the picture and Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow this up, but I want to see, uh, show the uh, like a panoramic view of the, of the whole log cutter because we have raw game numbers um, in columns like I through M, and then raw crunch, the crunch numbers. Those are our, our the way we present our numbers uh, the, in uh, columns U through AC, and then the adjusted percentage in AE through H and then adjusted base winner numbers. And then the, the two factors, these are the, the adjusting factors, opponents factors, uh, and then park factors. So I just wanted to give you the panoramic and I'll, I'm gonna go in on the next screen and kind of blow it up and then we'll, we'll look at that, uh, kind of how the, how the, how the adjustments uh, work with, with the ratings. Okay, so this is kind of the overall stats for, for Marquez for 2018. And his rock strikeout percentage, pretty good stats. 28.2, uh, 0.282 strikeout percentage, 0.273 from a median standpoint. And I'll get into median versus average in another video because it's a really important concept. But we, we do both. Uh, and then uh, the walk rate is, is 0.064 and so on and so forth. And you'll notice that this strikeout percentage and the median is, is the same as the adjusted percentage. That's because I haven't adjusted anything. So we have these toggles. And I built this so you could either you, you could toggle it for opponents faced, and we'll see opponents faced. And he's actually has a less opponent faced strikeout percentage, um, and that's an interesting that's an interesting anomaly because you have less from an average but more from a median. So, but then you put in the park factors, and then you can see that his strikeout percentage is is 2% more, which, which is a decent adjustment, but 
let's take a look now if we if we filter this down by um, by home because the the Rockies ballpark Coors Field uh, it has a 0.83 by handedness. I can't remember. It's 0.83, I think, on both sides. So, so let's take a let's take a look at at that. So we go take out the at, and then this is his home. These are his home numbers. So you can see 28%, which is still good at, at Coors Field. 29 from a median standpoint, but with the adjusted, it's actually a 33%. Like that's how how we factor what it, what it, what it should be, based on the fact that in in Coors Park in Coor, at Coors Field it's a 0.83 strikeout uh, number and it's one point as and now this is as right-handed pitcher so it's it's park factor as the right-handed pitcher so this will be the same going down uh, because he's always going to be right-handed I guess the only guy would be is the the guy from Australia that. That did uh, he? He could. Boy, I can't remember the guy's name off the top. But he, he would pitch right-handed, then he'd switch the glove and pitch left-handed. So I don't know how we'd model that. It'd be we'd have to. That'd be a challenge. I'd have to figure out. I'm sure I could, but but anyway. So and then the walk factor. A uh, little bit more walks at Colorado. These are his opponent factors. He's faced opponents that strike out more than uh, than the average at home. And uh, so anyway, it's this adjusted percentage is comprised of each game's adjustment based on opponent faced and and park factor so and it's pretty significant because now instead of having a 28 percent you know everybody would say oh he's got a 28 percent strikeout rate at home but when you adjust that for the park factor it's actually five percent more which is really significant so just just kind of knowing that how to do that is very important when you're setting setting up a model and uh you know being able to incorporate these these ideas is that that helps you and, and incrementally as you build different logic into your model then the accuracy will increase so this is something that i just wanted to point out that that i thought was important uh, and okay let's take a look at uh let's go ahead and look at the tomorrow's uh, base winter crunch and uh, we'll pick out a nice under for you guys we really we ended up four and one. I'm doing this after the Met. The Mets game was six six to two, and they allowed two two runs in the bottom of the ninth. Otherwise, we would have been five and zero. Oh. So, anyway, I'll take four and one on those unders. But let's let's take a look at tomorrow's card and get you one. Okay, we're gonna look at an under here, and you guys are lucky because you get a double play in this game, and we are going out to SunTrust Park. You Darvish versus Max Freed. Line on this is nine under minus 120. Base winner lines got it at 7.6. Good value. And uh, main reason on, on this under is, well, the main reason we like the Cubs and the under is because we have a nice low number for you, Darvish. And baseball hipsters have been on us about it for years. But based on the, on the data that, that, I've, that I take into account to rate these, these pitchers, we like Darvish 11% better than average. And uh, Freed, he's pretty decent, 4% worse than average, but not bad. So you get a cumulative uh, better run suppression pitching effect in this game. The relief, the relief staff, a little bit, a uh, little bit rough, uh, to be to be perfectly honest, and kind of kind of plays uh, plays against the under uh, our under philosophy. But the way the the Cubs bullpen shakes up is that top half's a little bit better. Um, let's take a look inside the game. Okay, so we can just take a look at Darvish real fast. We, we expect him to get the top half of the bullpen. One of the things that Darvish, he's got a high walk rate, but he also has a, a really high strikeout rate. So um, you can see our relief level has him as a, about, about what he is, is 11% better than average. So let's take a look now at the Cubs bullpen makeup and we've I think maybe we've talked about this on a video but it's a good refresher anyway so they've got Strop their closer Edwards Carl the Truth baby and C-Sheck and these guys are pretty decent um 85 now I don't know where that ranks them but still pretty good pitching at least compared to to average so and uh I mean 
there's really they're not great bullpens. I mean, I can't say that, but I think that the combination will will minimize the they'll give give them like the Edwards and the C check and uh, Strop gives those guys a, a higher percentage of getting in the game. And I mean, I'll, I'll take my chances with with uh, three sub 100 relievers as well as Darvish at 11 percent. So um, offensively, this this is kind of a a number that I wanted to to point out. Uh, about the Cubs. There's not numbers regarding the Cubs. They're really pretty good middle of the lineup. We like Bryant. We like Rizzo. Uh, Javi Baez we like. Uh, we don't like uh, Amor Jr. We have him in a 95. And then Bodie Hayward and then Zagunis. Uh, we like. They're all we don't like. We dislike. They are sub 100 uh, by our projections. So uh, kind of overall a, a lower number when you, when you face that in. You put the pitcher in and uh, while Atlanta's a little bit better, uh, we love Freddie Freeman. He's 142. Uh, but we don't like Ozzy Alvis at 91. And so hipsters might be upset about us for that. But that's, that's the way the numbers, um, based on the process that we go through. And I showed you that on, on Yasiel Puig. So we, we go through that on every batter. And then Dansby Swanson below average as well. Pitcher bats twice. That's going to help our cause. And uh, let's take a look at some of the other components that we like. And I'm not going to get into the umpire, how we do umpire ratings, but it's it's pretty good. Uh, it's pretty detailed how we how we uh, organize that uh, that run suppression data for the umpire, and uh, he's a he's a low umpire, so 97.9. Let's see where he's ranked. Okay, so there he is. He is 29th in in baseball. So there's I think there's 83 guys we have in here. Oh, there's 90. Let's try to go down to the bottom. Ooh, there you go. Base winner, umpire ratings. And uh, he's he's 29th. And he, he he allows more strikeouts than normal umpire, but just by, by 1%. And then he, he doesn't allow a lot of walks. So good, good, good from an umpiring standpoint there. Uh, park factors are interesting for uh, Atlanta. They've got a two-year park factor for SunTrust Park, and uh, for, with, for right-handed batters, it's 99 by our calculations, and for lefties, it's 93. So, put everything together, we got a 7.6 projection. I'm gonna play that under nine minus 120, and go with the Cubs as well. You guys, hope your bets cash. Hope you enjoyed the description of how we do pitcher adjustments for for with the log cutter and uh hope you guys have a have a nice winning day tomorrow he knows what price is right yeah